What was that thing that Dr. Nemo told me not to Google? Oh yeah, I remember. FBI! Ah! You're under arrest! No, please! Just kidding, it's me, Dr. Nemo. Huh? Do you care about your privacy while browsing the internet? Maybe you should use Express VPN. Okay. You can use a VPN location in 94 different countries. Wow! And trust me, it's super fast. And you can browse anonymously, just like an internet ninja. You can use it on all types of devices. Well, maybe not all of them. Can you leave my apartment, please? And you have an unconditional 30-day money-back guarantee. Hmm. Oh, hello there. I'm Nemo, and sorry for that thing. Today in Microcosmic, we're gonna talk about a microorganism that is essentially a vacuum cleaner. My budget is very low. The organism we're gonna talk about today are the rotifers. They are animals and they form their own phylum called rotifera, which means wheelbarrow. They were first described by John Harris in 1696 and today we count around 2,200 species. Their size varies between 50 micron and 2 millimeters. They are divided in three subgroups. Deloidea, Monogononta and Seizonidea. You mostly find them in freshwater environments. The ones you'll see in this video come from lichen, using the same collection process that I used in the tardigrade video. And if you haven't seen that one, maybe you should just check it out. The type of rotifers I'm gonna show you today are deloids, and they're quite different from other rotifers because of their reproduction strategy. In fact, they are parthenogenetic, parthenogenesis being a type of asexual reproduction. Before we go any further, let me just explain what is the difference between sexuality and reproduction in biology. Sexuality implies an exchange of genetic material. Reproduction defines a process by which a new New organisms is generated. So in sexual reproduction you have both an exchange of genetic material and the generation of a new organism and that is the case for humans for example. During asexual reproduction since there is no exchange of DNA the new organism generated is a clone of the original one. So can there be sexuality without reproduction? That is a good question and yes in a certain sense you can take bacterial conjugation as a form of sexuality without reproduction. In fact, during this process, bacterial cells transfer genetic material, but there is no generation of a new organism. Instead, it is an existing organism that is transformed. Back to our bdeloids. As I said before, they are parthenogenetic. There is no male, only females. Their embryos grow and develop with no need of fertilization. And this is incredibly fascinating when you're studying the evolution of sex. We have never observed a male, and based on fossil evidence, the Lloyds have been asexual for 25 million years. Imagine being a virgin for 25 million years. Oh, <laughs> don't worry for me. I still have 24,999,972 years to find a sexual partner. Hope. There is still a lot of disagreement regarding their phylogeny. Since they have been asexual for millions of years, 
their classification really puts into question the concept of species itself. Experts don't know if certain varieties should be considered different species or different strains or morphotypes. The body of deloids is divided in three parts. The foot, the trunk and the head. While rotifers can be free-swimming organisms, they can use the toes on their foot to stick to surfaces. Inside the trunk you will find the organs and the head contains a structure that makes rotifers special. The corona. No, not you. Go away. The corona is a ciliated rotatory organ and it's used for both locomotion and feeding. In fact, it creates water currents that directs the food particles inside the mouth. Before reaching the stomach, the food is ground by the mastax, a pharynx with a jaw-like structure. The shape of the corona and the currents it creates are very reminiscent of a vacuum cleaner to me. And just like tardigrades, I think it's fascinating to see how such microscopic organisms can be so complex. Oh, I forgot to say that, but they also have a cerebral ganglion. And some of them also have primitive eyes called ocelli. Also like tardigrades, they have the ability to enter a cryptobiotic state in conditions of extreme desiccation. And they can remain dormant for many years before being rehydrated. So that's all for today. I hope you like those little microorganisms. I really love them. I don't know what the next microcosmic episode is going to be about. If you have any idea of something you would like me to show under a microscope and explain, just let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please like it, share it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done it yet. In the description, you will find links to my Instagram, Twitter, Spreadshirt and Patreon. And if by any chance you're interested in ExpressVPN, please use the link in the description. This is a service that I personally use and love and maybe you should give it a try. Okay then, see you next time for another episode of Microcosmic.